hey y'all welcome back to my channel thank you all for stopping by let's go in the kitchen and prepare this delicious lunch with me okay guys so let's start by preparing our macaroni potato salad first here I have some red skin and yellow potatoes mixed. I'll be using some elbows macaroni and some eggs. I have better than bouillon as well as some mayonnaise and miracle whip. I'll be using some scallions, some onions, bell peppers. I have sweet relish, mustard, ranch dressing. And for the seasoning, I will list everything that I use down in my description box. So to a preheated pot with some water, I will add some of that better than bouillon to add flavor and taste to the macaroni and potatoes. You could also add salt here or chicken bouillon if you prefer. We will mix well and then we will add our eggs in here as well. We are adding everything in here that needs to be cooked because they all take about the same time, around 10 to 12 minutes. Everything should be perfectly cooked. Now let's prepare the dressing. To a mixing bowl, we'll add our Miracle Whip and the mayonnaise, as well as the sweet relish and the mustard. We'll also add our ranch dressing and our seasoning here. And I will go in with just a tad bit of red wine vinegar. We will mix well and we'll set this aside. Now once I mixed everything together and tasted it, I realized that I needed some more sweetness in there because I like my potato salad sweet. Everybody have their preference. If you don't like your sweet, you could stop right here. But I did went in with a little bit of honey and it was just perfect. Once I'm done, I just cover it and set it aside until the other ingredients are finished boiling. Once the macaroni and potatoes are cooled, you want to go in with the eggs as well as your onions, bell peppers, you know, give it a good mix and then we will add that dressing in here. We'll also add our fresh green onions. I forgot to add that, but I add it in once I was done mixing and that's it. Super simple and easy. And this salad was absolutely delicious. When I tell you it was so good, I almost ate it all. <laughs> before um, I was done cooking the meal. Now this you can prepare ahead of time. You can do it like the night before. That's exactly what I did. I did this the night before and allow it to sit overnight and everything gets to marinate and it tastes even better the next day. Also, it saves time if you're doing a dinner. It saves time. You don't have to cook everything at once. Now moving on to the second side, today I'll be doing a fresh garden salad. I will not be doing any cooked vegetables. So here I have some cabbage, carrots, lettuce, cucumbers, and tomatoes. So this is how I prepare it. And when I'm actually ready to serve, I will toss it all together. And everyone will add their dressing individually onto the salad. Now for the third side, today I'll be doing some meatless cook-up rice. You know as a Guyanese, I think sometimes we forget that cook-up rice can be done as a side and not a full meal. We're so used to doing it as a one-pot dish, a full meal, that we forget that it could go as a side as well. So today I'll be doing a meatless cook-up rice. So here I have some parboiled rice and I'll be using some red peas and some black eyed peas. I did soak them overnight so they'll be easier to boil. I have some onions, bell peppers, coconut milk, my fresh herbs which are thyme, basil, uh, scallion and parsley. I have some garlic and ginger, riri peppers. I'll be using some seasoning which I will link in the description box. I also have some brown sugar I'll be using as well. To a medium sized pot I've added my peas and now I will go in with some water. We will allow these to boil until they're nice and tender. 
To a pot with some oil, I will now add my aromatics as well as the herbs. We'll mix well and allow them to go for about three to four minutes. So at this point you want to add the peas as well as your washed rice. Make sure you wash your rice thoroughly before adding it. Then we'll add our seasoning to add flavor and taste to the dish. We will also add the sugar as well. I forgot to add a sugar here so you won't see me adding it on camera but I did add it off camera. We will allow these to go for about 3 minutes before adding the liquids. Now you want to add some of that peas broth in here. Uh, you want to make sure you save that when your peas is done boiling. We will also add some coconut milk, give it a good stir, and we'll add our hot peppers here. We'll cover it and allow it to simmer on medium low heat until all the liquid evaporates or most of the liquid evaporates. And you want to go in and give it a little stir every now and then to make sure nothing is burning or sticking at the bottom and make sure everything is being cooked evenly. After about 20-25 minutes, all the liquid has evaporated and this is what we have here, meatless cook-up rice. Now it will look a bit wet because you don't want your cook-up rice to be super super dry because as it cools down, it would dry anyway. So you want to leave a little bit of liquid in there. When it cools down, this is how it will look. You see how all that liquid disappeared? And you have the perfect cook-up rice. Now let's move on to our entrees. So today we'll be doing some oven-baked barbecue chicken. Here I have four leg quarters that I washed in lemon juice. And I'll be using some Japanese barbecue sauce. Uh, for the seasoning, I have chicken bouillon, seasoned salt, all-purpose seasoning, black pepper, and some paprika. Now what you want to do is add some of that barbecue sauce to the chicken. That barbecue sauce is so so delicious. If you can find it in your area, go ahead and try it. Um, you could find it at most Asian markets or at Whole Foods. If you have a Whole Foods where you live, yeah, they sell it also. So once we add the sauce and the seasoning, we will make sure that it's nicely marinated and we will set this aside to marinate for a few hours. Now I did this like in the morning. If you look at my clock there, you can see it was 7.50 in the morning and I started cooking it in the afternoon. Now I forgot that I wanted to add some fresh green seasoning. So afterwards I went ahead and added that, two tablespoons and just mix it in. If you don't have that, you know, you can omit it, but it adds great flavor. And if you don't have that, make sure you add a little bit of garlic and onion powder to the seasoning. I didn't add the garlic and the onion powder because I had it blended in my green seasoning. Now let's make the sauce we'll use to base our chicken. Here I have some regular barbecue sauce. I'm using Sweet Baby Ray's. But you can use any kind of your choice. I also added some ketchup there and some of that Japanese barbecue sauce. I went in with some brown sugar, mix well and just set it aside. Now to a baking dish, I will add some of that sauce that we made to the bottom of the dish because I'm not going to be flipping the chicken. So the sauce will coat the bottom of the chicken while we will brush the remainders at the top of the chicken. So once we are done here, we will place the chicken into the baking dish and then we will add, you know, the remaining seasoning that's at the bottom of the bowl. We will cover this and place it in a 400 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes. Then I'll show you all the next step.
after 40 minutes this is how the chicken is looking we'll go ahead now and baste it for the first time we'll place it back into the oven uncovered for 15 minutes then we'll bring it back out baste it again and place it back in for 15 more minutes which will make it a total of one hour and 20 minutes once it comes out it should be looking like this perfectly done it was so juicy and amazing now let's move on to the next entree now i'll be doing some steak skewers so here i have some ribeye steaks that i cut into cubes and i'll be using some uh steak seasoning cumin garlic powder seasoned salt black pepper some complete seasoning and some sazon so we will add all the seasoning to the steak as well as some oil and we will just mix the combine we will set that aside while i prepare my vegetables So for my vegetables, I have some bell peppers and onions. I did sprinkle a bit of salt on them and I'll be using these skewers here. All of the kitchen utensils and stuff that you see me using can be found on my Amazon storefront. So in no particular order, I will go ahead and just place the, um, the steak and the vegetables onto the skewer and we'll just continue this process until we're all done. You could also use the wooden skewers as well. Just make sure that you soak them in water before you, um, you actually use them because we don't want to set the house on fire. <laughs> So today I'll be using my Ninja Foodie Smart Grill and I did set this on the grill setting to the max uh, temperature and we'll be cooking these for about 6 to 8 minutes depending on how you like your steak. So I'll cook these for about 6 minutes and once 6 minutes is up this is how they are looking. We will just remove these and put the next set in and just carry on with the same process until we are all done. If you look closely when I put in the next set you can see that I use some wooden skewers because I ran out of the metal ones and they were just fine. You just have to soak them in water before you put them in here. Now let's prepare some fried grouper. So I already washed this in lemon juice and I'll be using some fresh green seasoning. We'll add a tablespoon of that and we'll go in with some fish seasoning as well as some Old Bay and a pinch of black pepper. We will mix this to combine and we'll set it aside. Let it marinate for about 10 minutes, 20 minutes, however long you want. So before we fry the fish, I'll go ahead and fry some ripe plantains first. I don't like to reuse fish oil, so we'll fry the plantains, then we'll use the same oil to fry the fish. I know everybody knows how to fry plantains, so I don't need to explain this step. So once they're done, remove them. And today I'll be using this Zatarain's fish fry, you know, to coat my fish. So what I did was added one egg along with about a quarter cup of milk for the batter mixture and I just coat the fish in there then we add it to that fish fry make sure that it's nicely coated with the fish fry if you want you could just use regular flour or whatever um, breading you have on hand you can use that you don't have to use what I'm using so we will fry the fish once it's nice and golden brown on one side give it a flip you guys know the whole routine and the usual once it's golden brown on both sides we remove them and carry on until we're all done And 
And here you have it, my idea of a delicious Father's Day lunch. If you're looking for a Father's Day lunch for your dad this Father's Day, this is the perfect one. I just had to show you all how this fish was juicy and delicious on the inside. And I hope you all give the recipe a try. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it, and leave a comment down below. I will leave all the ingredients that I use down in my description box, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your support. And as always, enjoy.